We ask y'all to send us some hot takes on our community page. If you want to participate in this, subscribe to the channel. But with that being said, let's get into the takes, man. Jason Tatum is a regular season merchant. Retweet. All right, man. Y'all want to hate on my guy JT so much, bro. How is he a regular season merchant when some of his best moments are in the playoffs? I don't know what to tell you. 2018, 2022, 2023. And wait till we come up this year, man. Okay. Nah, Tatum, I wouldn't call him a regular season merchant because there's some significant playoffs droppers that are in the NBA so I wouldn't go as far as to call him that but Tatum is definitely a guy that has been disappointing sometimes in the sense of we think something and then it doesn't happen so I see where you're coming from out of frustration and memes but um in general I wouldn't call him a merchant I just think that he's a guy that's a little up and down in the postseason Paul George is gonna be a future player archetype I wholeheartedly agree I disagree I think he is right now I don't think that's a future thing they're wings that can defend shoot threes and dribble are literally just becoming a thing if hell centers that can shoot threes and dribble are literally becoming a three thing yeah no I think that's what everybody wants now rather than future so I disagree because my I guess my hot take is that's kind of like the archetype player now and that's why a lot of people think that he's the greatest of all time in this next generation yeah I think Paul George is just the first want to really up that three-point part of his game compared to like a T-Mac or a Kobe because this archetype has already existed but uh Paul George was just the first one to make it look saucy you see what I'm saying every time any one of us do all-time NBA drafts boy if you get 2019 Paul George no one is complaining oh oh the, the defense he can play anywhere when you talk about a versatile wing who can score off the dribble score off the catch has Post game can run the floor. That's a wing that you want on anyone's team, to be honest with you. So people have tried to argue with me in the past that Paul George is more of a plug-in player on any team than uh, Kevin Durant, even. So yeah, I already think this is the archetype. Andrew Wiggins and Aaron Gordon type picks that become role players on winning teams are the most underrated brand of players. I don't think they're underrated players. I would say they're underrated draft picks, if that makes sense. And to answer that question, I'd say yeah, honestly, you guys downplay what a championship is a lot, like a lot a lot like the fact that some of you guys are like yeah and you won the championship in 2022 yeah and you won the championship in 2021 yeah and you won the champion niggas they won the championship you know how many brand bases still can't say that niggas were born and died without being able to say like bro the championship is crazy and if you are telling me that you are a team then yes you didn't get the best player out of the draft the hall of fame out of the draft the most box office guy out of the draft but you drafted the guy that noticeably was the reason you won a championship made the right move honestly in terms of picks i do agree agree as well i just think this idea that you just draft the best player every single year that's something that theoretically sounds good but at some point fit does have to matter at some point and i guess the latest example would be the scoot henderson brandon miller conversations going into last year's draft not to say that brandon miller is an aaron gordon type pick but just this idea that even though Lamelo is already there that they should just draft scoot when there's a six foot nine forward who can fit better alongside Lamelo was like crazy to me but yeah fit fit has to matter at some point and not every Every draft pick has to be a star, especially when you already got a core of stars. Like if, if OKC had a high draft pick this upcoming draft, do they need another star, bro? Like what are the weaknesses of your team, bro? And, and address those with a draft pick. And especially because of the fact that you have more draft picks in the future. Yeah, let's let's address some of our needs than just, hey, who's who's the best prospect right now? OK, doesn't really fit our system. OK, let's just draft them. Uh, I think my one exception to the rules, if you have like pick one through three or five, even and it's like, OK, hold on now. Trade out of here. <laughs> like, trade, trade out of here at that point, maybe. But in general, no, nah, I ain't really tweeting. Taco Fall is an all-NBA level player if you played in the 60s through 80s range. Yo, y'all be stretching that range. I mean, if you had said 60s and 70s, I might have I might have fucked with you. But the 80s, dog, nah. <laughs> nah, nah. I cannot give you the 80s, man. Um, This is even the high end. Just read the all-NBA teams in the 80s. And you're like, oh. <laughs> so, so, like, nah, 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 nah. But um, when was uh when was Manute in the, not Manute. When was, no, it was Manute. Yeah, when was Manute in the league? Manute was in the league in 86. He got drafted in 86. Retired in 95. But his prime was from 86 and 91 and he did make one all defensive team in his rookie year but that was it dpoy consideration majority of the time yeah so you think taco fall is just so much substantially better than him that he would probably get a dpoy maybe is that the take um but no. then it's like <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like that, that's what I'm saying. So you're, you, you'd have to say that Taco's better than Manute Bowl. And if Manute Bowl was able to get, get DPOY consideration, Taco Fall would at least get one and then also be able to score the ball. And that's how he would do it. Yeah, nah, I disagree. 
Mentality is everything in the NBA. Everyone that has gotten there is so good that the only separating factor is the mentality and the extra work they put in. Some people just don't got it. Actually, yeah, I agree. I think that um, talent nowadays in the NBA is just too abundant. Everybody's good. And that's a conversation that um, a lot of the old heads even don't fuck with, is that when we say everyone's good, well, everyone is good. I don't know how to tell you that. And every motherfucker is skilled at basketball. Every point guard has a fucking handle of hell. Where I agree with you is that there are some franchises that are in limbo because the player just ain't it up here. We talked about the Hornets earlier with Brandon Miller. Dog, I'm sorry. I, I can't even, like, hold it back no more. May, I don't know him, but from what I've watched, don't seem like LaMelo really cares. And I'm like, yo, LaMelo kind of cared? Shit would be crazy. So, and I'm not going to say he'd be top five or anything like that, but it's noticeable that he just be cooling. And you can see players that want to win a championship, players like Anthony Edwards that want to change culture and everything, and then players who are just like, all right, you're the building block. And then players who are just like, I'm here for the bag. So, yes, I do agree. Mentality is pretty much everything. I'm going to disagree. I'm going to just take the take uh, for face value. But um, I'm sorry. You can be as men mentally strong as you can. Wemby, Wemby going to be Wemby, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, yeah, but, not every. Yeah, I did say everything. You're right. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. everything. I do think that mentality is arguably the. It's it's arguably it's a really big factor. I'm, I'm not just going to disagree really there. Big. Yes, it's it's a really big factor. But I do think uh, you know mentality can only take you so far. Giannis is a six six eleven with a whatever wingspan he got. And I think I can. I think you can. I guess you can make the case, you know, you have to have a certain mentality to work hard in the gym to build up the muscle that Giannis got, which is a big, big part of his game. So I guess, I guess you can make that front. But um, sometimes, specifically with sports and athletics, hard work can only take you so far, man. Shout out to that quote, but um, there, there is a cap. There is a cap. Believe in yourself. You will be NBA championship one day. That is your Nindo. Sorry, let me stop. Go ahead. If the Celtics don't win this year, they will never win with the Brown and Tatum core. I'll let you solo squad that one. How do you feel? Two years. Next next year's the last chance. For real, for real. Another last chance. Yeah. It is. It is, bro. I actually agree with him. I'll go on a limb and say that. Why? Because at that point, I'd be shocked if you're still testing out Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. At that point, I may even call you a little incompetent if you're still testing out Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Because you surrounded them with an all- uh, According to you guys, an all-star caliber guard, self for some of you guys, too. You gave them Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, obviously. You have Chris Porzingis, You have Big Al. And then your the remaining bench players, they're like low-key, not shit. They're just not all great. So it's like, all right. Some of you guys would dead look in the face and call this a super team. I know a lot of you guys do think this is a super team. And then for those that don't, the only reason you don't is because you don't think that highly of who? Jason Tatum and or Jalen Brown. So the idea that like, yo, we're going to just keep trusting this duo be kind of crazy to me. I ain't going to lie. I don't give a fuck how much you paid them. You paid them to make this team, in my personal opinion. I don't think you paid them because you're tied to J Jalen Brown for five years. Yeah, I just think um, in the grand scheme of things, people are really harsh on this team because they have been on the spotlight for a very long time, specifically Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, right? They, they've been in, in front of our eyes since 2018, but in actuality, and we don't even want to talk about how that season actually started, 2022 was the first season where this Celtics team felt confident that, okay, this Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they're the core that we're moving forward with. And in my opinion, that 2022 team overachieved, overachieved like crazy. Motherfuckers did not see Rob Will being the Rob Will that he was. Was Derek White being the Derek White that he was, Marcus Smart as well. By the end of the 2022 season, right, we we should have won that championship. I ain't gonna lie, but uh, that light skin and Under Armour was was cooking us. Last year slash next season, that was the first year where we went into the season with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown leading the pack, and we had championship expectations. To me, y'all want to bring up 2020, but I don't I don't think y'all remember exactly what the fuck was going on in 2020. But um, yeah, 2023 was the first season. Obviously, we didn't get the job done. You know, I. I understand Jason Tatum was injured in game seven, but it shouldn't have even gotten there. This year is just the third season, really. It, it, honestly, it's two and a half, where we're going into the season again with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown leading the pack at 26 years old. And we want to say this is the last chance with this core when I don't see Jason Tatum getting any worse next season. I don't see Jalen Brown getting any worse next season. And if we look at our books, the only one that's really up in the air is Drew Holiday, because I think we need to extend them like literally in a couple weeks but 
but just from a contractual perspective, let me see. Let me let me look at our contracts. Yeah, from a contractual perspective, Drew Holiday has a player option, so we can either opt in or we extend him. Chris Stops is still here till 2026. Jason Tatum is probably gonna get a super max. Jalen Brown just got his contract. Derek White is um here until the end of next season. Al Horford is still here until the end of next season. The only like really important dude we're losing, I guess Luke Cornett. If y'all really fuck with Luke Cornett now, and uh Xavier Tillman. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I I, I think it would just to say that this is this core's last chance when next season it's looking like we're gonna be one of the top teams in the league again and going into the playoffs next season, we're probably gonna be a team you don't wanna face. I I, I can't I can't agree. I don't think it's your last chance. I just don't think I just don't think y'all are gonna win if y'all don't. Cause this is a very ripe year to do so. This is the easiest that the East has looked for you guys in a long time. I also disagree with the expectation thing, but that's a different subject for a different day. But I also think that either way, even if this is truly your second time having championship expectations, yeah, it's it's a very, very, very open window. You guys should definitely be in the finals. Um, I'll even go a step further and give Boston credit that uh when you really look at it in hindsight, Jason. And Tatum is pretty much a lot to go 16 games in the offs outside of literal, literally two outliers lying seasons. So it's not like this team won't win games. It's not like this team won't have deep playoff runs. But in terms of me ever believing that they will win, not that they don't have a chance to win, but that they actually will win, pretty much like ugh, it's not going to happen because if I run into a situation where despite having a significantly better team, Brown and Tatum again either A, stink it up, or B, run into a guy that's just that much better than, than them again, I'm not going to trust i'm not gonna go into that following season like yo if tatum makes the leap of leap of leap of leaps because we've been talking about him making a goddamn bunny hop for four years or jalen brown just being better the discourse about him got worse over time i don't even know how the fuck that happened but um yeah i at that point i'm not saying they win i never say they don't have a chance again this is a team that as you said is under contract you're probably going to sign someone better than Luke Cornett because he's Luke Cornett. And then um, I think like a majority of the players you named outside of Drew Holiday aren't going to fall off. But for me to buy them winning, I don't know if I can do that. You know what? <sighs> I'm going to concede that, that that's a good point is the difference between a chance and if they'll actually win. I've stand 10 toes with this, this, this era will be defined at the end of the day, regardless of how much talent he has around him will be defined by how good Jason Tatum is. We want to, we want to sure. sugarcoat. We want to dance around it, bruh. But again, historically speaking, especially because this team is trying to be a dynasty. They're, they're trying, they're trying. You need that tier one player playing at a tier one level. And he, there are nights where he is, but the tier one players playing at a tier one level do it every single night not every single night but they do it extremely consistently and um until jason tatum makes that leap i don't think they can win to be honest with you I, am i just being optimistic that he will make a, a certain leap in the in the playoffs yes uh, do I think they have the pieces around him to the point where even if he does make that leap, this is your best chance of, okay, if, if he doesn't take that leap, there's still like four motherfuckers on the squad that can score 20 a game. That's definitely the best solution to uh, amend that problem. But yeah, I think this 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 error will be defined by how good Tatum is, bro. Yeah, I agree. And I don't even want to drag this too long, but I'll say this, so it's like to put where I think of these guys, right? Yes, you were down 0-3. You then tie it the fuck up. And I'm not saying that my premise for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown is to break history. What I am saying is, dog, in the game, this nigga goes 5 of 13. Oh, no. Like, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, come on, man. Like, I, I'm rooting for Jason Tatum, though, because I ain't going to lie. They will give Gilbert some better uh, shit to stand on because <laughs> them Euros is fucking y'all up. Uh, speaking of that, a USA versus World All-Star game where the world team is competing for funds towards their country or town would force players to be more competitive. You said a world host. <laughs> you know what? I appreciate the effort, and I'm not disrespecting you. I'm not the smartest guy, especially when it comes to geography. But um, it's, it that's a, that don't even sound fair. <laughs> I wouldn't even agree to that shit unless it was all pride on the other side because unless you're going to allocate funds equally for what you would do for the U.S. to every country that's on Team World, yeah, it's not really fair. Not really fair at all. What are you going to do? Give Slovenia 1.1 mil? What's it? Serbia 2.2. And then uh, Canada 750K because you're right there, bud. Like, like nah, it's, it's Team World. It's not, you know. Yeah, legit. Team World would not try. <laughs> it would just be a Team USA charity event at that point. <laughs>
at that point, agendas would get pushed. Team World wouldn't agree to this because you're right. They wouldn't even try. Actually, you're right, so Oh, my God. They wouldn't even try because they'd be like, this is unfair. No one is repeating in the 2020s. Interesting. But I ain't going to lie. I disagree. I think they're doing it right now. <laughs> hey, book me in. My hot take is ain't nobody stopping Denver. <laughs> it's not happening. I, I'm tired of y'all acting like it will happen. It's really nah. It, it's injuries, maybe. But who cares? Like, who goes into the season thing? Oh, I can't wait for this. And like, well, some shit do. It's weird. But in general, no. I think the Nuggets are a team that consistently big game. All right, bet. So Jokic, let's see who you do again. And he cook them too. All right, Jamal Murray, let's see how you do against. And he cooked them, too. This is a team that substantially, and eye test-wise, just visually plays up to its competition. In the postseason, I think this team just becomes a significantly better talent. They're way better than 90% of teams in the half-court set. They're an underrated defense because of what you guys view Nikola Jokic as when this defense is fantastic. They're giving everyone problems. They don't match up badly against anybody, and they have a cheat code in Jokic that automatically makes them a bad matchup for 90% of the league. I have the Nuggets repeating. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. The only reason I don't have full confidence in my Celtics winning the championship is because of that one team. Because that one team, when you just look at it, it's like, damn, what is stopping them? When you talk about a team that's already proven, has continuity like crazy, that core has been together since 2019, y'all. Like, uh, be, be serious. 2019. At, at least Jamal Murray, Jokic, and Mike Malone. At the end of the day, those three motherfuckers that are the core of their success have been together since 2019, bro. Proven. They got the talent. They got the X's and O's. They got the role players. It's just, oh my goodness, man. If, if there's one team that could do it, it's, it's definitely them. There's another team that could do it, though. <laughs> If my, if my green team breaks that, you know what I'm saying, does make that leap, I don't see what's stopping us next year. To not go full-blown Celtics hater because we had a mature conversation, so I won't just, you know, dump on it. If Boston, if Tatum actually, A, makes that leap, if Jalen Brown is more consistent player, or if the team's just that damn overpowered, I would argue that the Celtics could possibly do it. Um, I don't think that while there is parity in the league, I don't think that this is a situation where there won't be any repeats in the entire era. I would argue the late 2020s, Thunder going to be in that conversation and keep building around Luka the right way. He going to be in a conversation to repeat as well. And maybe that's supporting your uh, idea of, well, see, you name like five teams. What's the chance that they, but yeah, I'm saying in terms of people that could actually go on and repeat. I don't think all five teams mentioned will win a championship. The Bulls will make it to the second round. Oh, the hell they won't. Yeah, hey, the man, I don't know. what. It's a lot of boredom. And this is one of those things where as a YouTuber, I get mad souls because how did three people see that and go, yup, I, I, don't, I don't fucking know. It, it, just, it, just, it just pisses me off. But no, they're not next day. If Jimmy Butler wins the ring, he's greater all time than Harden, Westbrook, and Chris Paul. <laughs> There's an argument for Big it. actually no. It's, yeah, it's an argument because you would have to argue that you only care about the postseason because it's the most important season. And then you would have to say that playoff Jimmy Butler is a better peak than Harden, West, and CB3. Unironically, statistically, you can make the argument for Chris Paul. You could try to make the argument for Westbrook. I think it's hard to make that specific argument for James Harden. Not that I think that James Harden clears a prime Russ or a prime CP3, but in terms of this argument, you'd have a hard time jumping over James Harden. But um, I see where you're coming from. It's interesting. Yeah, I see where he's coming from. It'd be like um, it'd be like a a lot of the the Paul Pierce versus great regular season player conversations. Yeah, because if Jimmy Butler gets a ring, that'd be three finals appearances, and it would just be a conversation about playoffs versus uh. But yeah, Harden, Westbrook, and Chris Paul peaked at MVP levels in the regular season, but Jimmy Butler never did. That that would be the crux of the conversation. And he said yes, said by a Heat fan, and so is we coming for you in the playoffs. I'm not gonna lie, man. I respect y'all to death but i'm saying no I, 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 I respect y'all bro but Ooh. oh my god i've never wanted the heat i've never wanted the heat to fucking lose as much as this year bro oh god bro because literally every time i just hey man the celtics are playing good oh but 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 the heat boy y'all are in the play in oh my god if y'all get bounced out in the play oh my god i'm talking about shit bro that's all i'm gonna say man if y'all get bounced out in the play in y'all oh, we, we coming for you in the playoffs if y'all don't even make it to the dance eat dick bro eat dick 
My God. He have 14 games left on their schedule as of this recording of this video. They're currently 37-31. Uh, they're the eighth seed right now. Yeah, if y'all go home because Trey Young puts on a master class, ah, oof. That's what I'm because saying. They would, play Reese, they would play Reese first, so they'd have to lose to Reese, and then they would play the winner of Hawks Bulls. I'm projecting the Hawks to win. Oh, my God, if y'all lose to the Bulls. But if y'all lose to the if y'all lose to a Trey Young master class in the play-in, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I gotta eat that one. I, I'm just saying, I, I get it why y'all have full confidence, but at the uh, on the same note, though, let's not act like y'all's playoff run last season was not an anomaly, man. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Man. Oh, that's all I'm gonna say. Hey, you bro. know what? We talking endless shit. Hey, if they make it out the play-in, they got y'all. They for sure got y'all. So we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Not scared. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no. If they beat Indiana, I guess they dodge you. Yeah. The Milwaukee got a face. <laughs> I feel, I, I yeah, feel bad for Milwaukee. Milwaukee we talking about Milwaukee, all this yeah. Celtics shit, but Milwaukee be getting dogged by them too, man. Yeah, Milwaukee and he that now Milwaukee Miami is gonna be funny as hell. Oh my god, Dame versus Miami, Dame, Dame versus <laughs> Miami, Dame versus Miami, Giannis versus the Heat part four. Yeah, that'd be funny if the Heat beat Milwaukee, bro. Dame is gonna leave. <laughs> oh, oh, oh god, bro, Dame is gonna leave, bro. There's no reason for Dame to be there. He had a bad season, he'd be a bad mouth in Milwaukee the whole time, and then he lost to the team that he thought about going to. Yeah, fuck no, he gone. If Jokic wins another chip, he can can arguably be better than KD or Giannis all time. I mean, I hear you. Giannis, you would probably have to say it. So, KD, I mean, <laughs> you know? KD would have the longevity argument and that'd be it. Let's, yeah, let's it you, would, you, you would have to say longevity solo plus ratio. But peak Jokic to prime KD, you generally would have an argument. I can't even be, especially because you said arguably. You didn't go like 10 tells on it. You dipped your toe in the pool. Yeah, it's um, Giannis, I agree with you. Giannis, he would just be better all the time for sure because you just say peak dire and has two chips and hey be honest good luck buddy but katie huh that's actually very i didn't even think of that yeah that's actually not a bad take at all yeah i think um well K katie's in that 15 range that 15 18 range and Jokic is headed there like he might be even gunning for that top 10 all time range man i ain't gonna lie the way that man's playing crazy and i know that probably pissed off the core of a lot of y'all let that nigga keep winning bro. <laughs> like let him keep winning and then already look like the greatest offensive center of all time it's gonna get nasty bro and i'm not gonna be the guy that want to kick people out but i'm just saying like this y'all got wilt and bill in y'all top 10s my top 10 is way different than y'all's because y'all got wilt and bill in there I don't. If LeBron didn't have any off-court aspirations, he could genuinely play until he's averaging 10 points a game, which wouldn't be until he's 48 years old. He shouldn't do that, though. Yeah. I don't even disagree that he could do that, but he shouldn't. When you're a level of LeBron James, at some point, it would be memeable if he was playing. They would flagrantly call out that he's chasing stats. Um, and if you don't care about any of that, if you're LeBron, you got some pride, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, if I ever get washed up, even as a YouTuber, right? But if I ever get washed up, I'm just, like, not even remotely funny. I know some of you guys think I'm corny. But, like, not even remotely funny, entertaining. I don't know anything. Like, even if you think I'm dumb, nigga, anything. So if it gets to a point where I am just washed and I'm over here 48 years old putting up whatever numbers, dog, let me go. Tell me it's time to hang it up, hang it up on. And that's what LeBron needs to do, especially because he's trying to have his kids in the league. He just be it'd be like, bro, bro, go home. Capability, though, because that's what this question is asking. Is he capable of it? Could he average 10 points inefficiently till 48? Yeah. Now that's dick suck, but probably. Yeah, he's he's yeah he's he's thirty nine, I think, right now. So ten years from now, the average points per game will probably be one seventy already per team, anyways. So he can't get one seventeenth of the pie. Now let me chill. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a drastic fall off. I say that for those that are thinking that we're going crazy. He would significantly be like in the 13s. If LeBron is a 20 point game scorer at age 48, I'm not even trolling. Jordan backed up. But but that's at that point. If you swap one, yo, oh my God, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'll read it for you. He said, oh my God, when he saw it, I'll read it for you, buddy. Don't worry. If you swap Wimby and Tatum, the Celtics have the same record. Just because Wemby actually fits really well with this team. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be a dick. Okay, I'm glad you acknowledged it. Look, look, look. Tatum, I'm not doing that, y'all, before y'all start. Tatum's better than him. 
It, it, not yet. I know. But hey, 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 load up the nines. Not now, though. Put them down. Got, Eddie, Tatum got two years. Eddie. Tatum got two years. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Not now. Not yet. Not yet, y'all. Wait, wait. But when it comes to this specific take, the only reason it's debatable is because if you take out Al Hole for dumbass, put him on the bench, and you really got Wemby and Phil. Ooh. <laughs> it, in in terms two. of just the record, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in terms of just the record, you you slide, you'd have Derek White and Drew at the backcourt. You just put Jalen Brown to the three. Porzingis is your four, and Wemby's are five. That's the best defensive team in basketball by a mile. Yeah, by so a at mile. That point, but at that point, yeah, I'd argue they do have the same record. Are they the same ceiling? Hell no. Yeah, because I ain't, maybe this is Mickey. I understand he's not a tier one player playing at a tier one level, but uh, you still need that closer, bruh. Still need that closer. And Jalen Brown being the closer. You trying to say Wemby can't close? Yeah. He's getting there. He's oh, getting there. Luka oh. Doncic cannot lead a team as the only starter to an NBA championship. Duh. I know we just had our uh, Tatum discourse or whatever. And that's because I disagree with the uh, expectations thing that me and Souls had. But me and Souls, hey, even even by his logic, he would agree. Yo, y'all got to stop, man. The nigga just got here. <laughs> he just, he just, this is his first team. This is, this is his first actual half-decent-looking team, bro. And by the way, shout out to Kyrie Irving, man. Uh, we I know we don't react to like stuff like OD reactionary. But what a fucking shot. Oh, my what what a fucking shot but this is like his first time having a team like this i know revisionist history are trying to gas up how jalen brunson was in dallas because of what he is now but it's okay to say that wasn't prime jb bro and maybe he was a hidden talent underutilized potentially sure but yeah it just come on bro fifth year can't do it ever it makes sense just the idea of winning a championship without a secondary star i, I disagree with bro. like jesus christ what do y'all think luca is <laughs> There's a guy that literally in this video said nobody will repeat, and we're sitting here asking Luca by himself to do. Uh, and, and do y'all understand how how widely praised Curry was for that? Because you know he's not supposed to do that <laughs> shit. Like that's not supposed to happen, bro. JJ Redick really is the only former NBA player that should have a podcast, as he actually offers good, interesting, insightful, and healthy dialogue when covering the NBA. I wholeheartedly disagree. This is a hella gatekeepy ass take. I believe any person should be allowed to just create whatever platform that they have and especially because we are on independent platforms where at the end of the day you get to choose what you watch and don't watch saying jj reddick is the only one that should have a podcast is kind of crazy to me i think everyone's perspective matters if you think jj reddick is just the highest level of that conversation that's fine and if anything i would agree with you but to say that you know gill's voice doesn't matter uh when he's an nba player who has a certain perspective on the game is, is crazy to me to say a fan's perspective on a game doesn't matter is is crazy when a lot of the dialogue uh well when some of the dialogue depending on the platform that you listen to is insightful and healthy and people really do know their research and you know do their due diligence to look shit up i think that's kind of crazy and also shit lebron Le lebron about to have a podcast so he said, he said lebron shouldn't have a podcast man well that's what jj reddick so oh sorry i'm good Nah, I'm not gonna lie. As a person that has a podcast, um, you're talking to the wrong duo of the podcast on this one. There's a duo that would agree with you probably. But um me and Souls, nah, I've I've won, I'm not with the gatekeepy, only smart people talk type shit. Cause one, who's to say who's smart? And then two, most importantly, dog, I ain't gonna lie. Not everybody has to have the exact same conversations all the time. Y'all would not want to, y'all y'all just wouldn't want that. There's a reason why Gil's Arena trends all the time. There's a reason why all the smoke clips trend all the time. There's a reason why uh, Paul George Paul, Paul George podcast trends all the time is because you guys don't want the same conversation being echoed. That's two. Three, X's and O's basketball, while obviously are healthy conversations, those are not the only healthy conversations. You can have a healthy debate. You don't have to break down every single thing to articulate a point. Now, what I will say, and where I will even agree with you there, is when fans buy this thing where NBA player, former NBA player, are always right because they did it, that's very unhealthy. And it gets even worse when a guy hops on a podcast and they're just like, I played so dot, 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 and it's real. And it, so I give you that, but the idea that they can't even voice their opinion, again, it's just gatekeeping as fuck. I'm good. Yeah, I just think every platform serves their purpose. A basketball platform's purpose doesn't necessarily have to be high-level X's and O's basketball, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes... Yeah, you know what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, like, I I'm just, like, for our purpose with Souls and Sages is just to make basketball fun, conversations fun. 
because I do feel like counter to what not not to say that JJ doesn't even make it fun because it's not like JJ's boring as shit. Basketball should be fun for for a lot of y'all, bro. This is entertainment for a lot of y'all. Um, it shouldn't be taken as seriously as some of y'all take it. Some of y'all be throwing out death threats and shit over the shit. It's not that serious, bro. So you 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 need to have that casual platform that you know kind of embraces that side of things. There's there's, there's a balance to things. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, death threats is fucking sick, by the way. I'm telling you, enough, this is just a sport. But with that being said, if you guys want to be included in the next iteration of our Hot Takes video, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to the community tab. We ask y'all on there to submit y'all takes, and that's where we get the reactions from. Follow us on Twitch. Links will be in the description. And uh, we're out of here, man. Peace. Peace.